Well, howdy, partner, and welcome back off the dusty trail. I'm a cow. My name is Mae Leitz, and I'm here to tell you about something you will never forget. And if you do, you have recently died. And thank goodness, I too long for the sweet, sweet release of death. But mostly because of the things I've had to see and hear for the amusement of you. But listen, I'm not complaining. I love, 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 love myself some really upsetting audio my like top 10 list of the most disturbing songs I've ever done heard now this topic is one of hot spicy debate it turns out everyone's got a different opinion on what constitutes a disturbing song now maybe I'm just a connoisseur of these things but I feel like I've done a decent job of parsing out the difference between very 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 scary and kind of cute and a little scary cute but psycho if you will like myself cute but psycho <laughs> So I have assembled a crack team of 10 upsetting pieces of audio that are songs of music that you will listen to and then you will be sad. And I'm so sorry that I've done it, but you asked and I obliged you and I would never let down a friend, never ever. I'm a generous God in that I don't just give you 10, no, no. I have got runners up for you and I'm going to debate them and tell you why I did not choose them or why I I felt the need to mention them at all. This is for your benefit so that you will make healthier decisions in the future about how you rank your ranked list. Did you know that it's perfectly okay to have many things on your ranked list and then tell people that you only have 10 things on your ranked list? So without further ado, I am now going to tell you about some pieces of audio you shouldn't go listening to if you would like to keep your sanity but guess what? I already lost mine, so I get to tell you all about it. Runners up, or the special mentions, is A Little Piece of Heaven by Avenged Sevenfold. Okay, so the reason I bring this up first is because this is, in my opinion, probably the weakest thing brought to this list. Like, if we're talking about things that generally I don't quite understand why they're super disturbing or considered disturbing, A Little Piece of Heaven is, while a song about murdering your girlfriend and eating her, more or less inauthentic to me. Okay, okay, I know you don't want to hear like an actual guy who wants to kill and eat his girlfriend sing you a little ditty about how he wants to kill and eat his girlfriend, but but I personally don't find anything that Avenged Sevenfold ever did to be particularly shocking. They are merely a metal band that I listened to in 2006. Yes, that's right. Grandma is really fucking old. Okay, so the next thing is the song Polly by Kurt Cobain, uh, which by the the way, I did tweet about this and a lot of your suggestions made it into my listens. Look at you, direct action. However, I think Polly is literally on here because Kurt Cobain did a suicide and they wanted to put some sad Kurt Cobain song on there. The man wrote a lot of very sad music and he also talked at length about potentially being transgender. I'm sorry, that is very unfortunate. Polly is debatably about like BDSM or maybe it's about murder, maybe it's about consensual, the killing of a partner romantically. This could potentially have the effect to uh, alter one's mind in some negative way. I don't necessarily think that it's that disturbing, which is why it didn't end up in my top 10, but we're gonna keep on trucking now, aren't we? Okay, this is actually genuinely very bad. Uh, I put uh, Jesus Todd by Burzum. Okay, okay, so mentioning Burzum whatsoever is, is like, um, uh, it's like walking into a field holding a, an active hand grenade. So Burzum is notably a like a white nationalist shitty black metal group run by one very bad dude named Varg who has very funny tweets. I think that this album very much represents the angry, hateful sound of someone who has done murder and is probably genuinely a Nazi. So horrifying to listen to if you have sense or sensibilities. Also notable that like Mayhem, the band that Varg at one point belonged to, no more because Varg murdered the uh, guitar player. If you don't know the story about Mayhem, uh, you should look it up, but I'll tell you real quickly. There weren't very many members in the band because the first lead singer, uh, 
uh, killed himself, and then the guitar player thought that his suicide was so gnarly that he just had to take a picture of it and put it on their album cover. Meanwhile, they hired Varg, a Nazi and probably evil, deeply, deeply evil, and he uh, went around burning down churches in their country and taking pictures of it so that they could put them on their album covers, basically admitting to the crimes. And then later on, he did just deadass admit to the crimes. And then when everybody started to distance themselves from Varg because they thought that he was going to destroy their career, you know, what with the whole Nazi thing and all, he just murdered someone. So yeah, it's it, 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 uh, what a horrible man. I put heresy by Nine Inch Nails because a lot of people were like, the downward spiral is so disturbing. And I'm thinking like, okay, Closer was objectively a song I got my uh, whole rocks off to about a million times with just about several boys. So disturbing, it is not. <laughs> However, there are certain songs on that record that I think deeply bother people, but more than anything, if you want to upset your fucking parents, might I recommend turning on the song Heresy, where the chorus, God is dead and no one cares. A great lyric to get fucked by. Next, I've listed Tiptoe Through the Tulips. Tiny Tim is his name? Okay, the reason this was suggested to me is because A, Tiny Tim has a scary aura. I understand this. Number two, the song has a weird demonic presence. I don't understand why it's there, but it's his high-pitched singing, something feels wrong to me. Also, you know, he probably was just a sweet, wholesome gay dude or something, so I'm not really gonna get too uh, fucked up over him. It's not that disturbing, but I think the majority of the reason why people find him and his music disturbing is because of the film Insidious, which, for some reason, decided to demonize this sweet, sweet man and his sweet, sweet music. Although, I will admit that there is some kind of creepy aura to Tiny Tim. I find his music horrifying, just sort of on the on the cusp of it. Although, I think blaming him for Insidious uh, and its popularity would probably be really silly. Red Right Hand, which is a Nick Cave song. I don't think that Nick Cave is particularly a, a disturbing man, but I do believe that he is kind of a spooky cowboy. A spooky cowboy I can fuck with. So, I do in fact fuck with Nick Cave. Red Right Hand is pretty cool. I think the reason why people think that it's scary is because the lyrics at time are very mumbled and very shouty and they have that one weird like piano solo in there that's like <laughs> The next thing, uh, someone told me that if I don't talk about Hansarash, I think is how that's pronounced, then uh, I am a fool and an idiot. Basically, they're just a very scary, very loud noise uh, notably large shows where they would do very big pieces of destruction for very, very harsh noise. Super cool, although I personally am not all that disturbed by noises. I'm more about narrative, I think. I think narrative scares me more than anything, although breaking pots and pans sure does upset my brain. Okay, the next thing, I just wrote Gigi Allen. I don't know where to start. I don't really know. I could pick the one where he sticks his needle, a uh, needle up his, up his uh, dick, you do heroin. I could pick the song where he's like sadly singing about a, a, a woman who he can't see because he is too strung out on heroin, masturbate on people, or shit on stage, or any of the things. Literally a million ways to tackle Gigi Allen. But the way that I would say it is that I grew up in Texas. Texas is a state pretty much known for being just rampant with disturbing things and stupidity. So, Gigi Allen thrived there. Notably, there were many Gigi Allen shows in Dallas where he gathered a very large crowd. A lot of people really wanted to see him. Five minutes into the show, he would rush out on stage, take his clothes off, shit on the stage. The stink would be so unbearable that everyone would leave, and then Gigi Allen would just lay on the ground and shoot heroin. It sounds like a great show to me. The reason I didn't put this on my list, I guess, is because I couldn't just think of a song that I was like, yeah, that Gigi Allen song sure is upsetting. He's an interesting iconoclastic figure. You should Google him, but I would not in any way say 
that he uh, made a disturbing song in specific. Speaking of people who, in my mind, didn't really make a disturbing song in specific is uh, Swans. Hot take, a lot of people are gonna be mad at me about this, but everyone on Earth said, oh my God, if you wanna listen to disturbing music, you gotta listen to Swans. So I put my headphones on, did a shitload of drugs, and I listened to Swans. And what I've basically determined is that Swans is fantastic music if you want to do heroin and lay on the ground. It's not really very disturbing, but it is kind of funny. It's weird sort of one-notedness. It's sort of evolving, growing, grotesque monster shape of its music. It's not really concerned about linearity, hearing many, many detailed layers of different things in there. And some of those things, sure, they're kind of haunting. Would I say that anything in Swans is outright disturbing. No, I would not. However, I do highly recommend the next time you go on a big old heroin bender to just turn on songs for the deaf. Queens of the Stone Age. Apparently, people think that Soundtrack for the Blind is really upsetting. The only thing I was really upset about was the fact that I spent over an hour doing that activity. Okay, the next thing. I, I'm realizing at this point that I'm talking a lot about black metal, and black metal is going to continue to be kind of a subject. We're gonna get away from it eventually, but we gotta talk about a couple little more black metal things. The first is the Satyricon art show. Technically not a song. Video you can watch of, of the lead singer of Satyricon doing noise performance, spoken word poetry, mixed with some tunes and some like genuinely demonic sounding noise. While doing this, he uh, began cutting himself with a knife real badly. Really, really badly. So I don't, uh, I want you to look it up, but you deserve to know that if you want to see something that's genuinely like, hello, I've made a shocking piece of art. That Satyricon art show is some shit. One of my best friends in the whole heckin' world, Tara, who's living in Texas, hi Tara, uh, Tara told me all about this so that I could know more about it and then I could report it to you. Tara told me about Gorgoroth and specifically the, the whole, I want to have very, very dead rotting animals that died recently on the stage with me every time I play. So Gorgoroth is like a gay black metal man who's got some pretty spicy tunes and a really killer image. If you've seen any of his music videos, they're quite horrifying. Going to one of those live shows, very dead animals that were very actual animals that had died earlier that day, like roadkill or shit like that, just strewn about. So the point is like smelled real bad. Things smelling bad is very disturbing. Uh, that counts in my brain. Okay, next is Nurse with Wound. I could pick like a million things. I, I Probably Soliloquy for Lilith would be the one that I would pick. That's one of my favorites. But it's basically noise music uh, that is torturous. Torturous to listen to. It gets to a place where it's, it's genuinely like really, really bizarrely hellish. Nurse with Wound is kind of like Swans, but if it were genuinely really upsetting. Swans has this almost like esoteric quality to it, but Nurse with Wound feels like it has intention, and that intention is to upset you. I actually genuinely really, really like Nurse with Wound, but I also feel like it's one of those things that you just don't recommend to people because they'll give you one of those looks, you know what I mean? After they've actually listened to it. And by look, I mean they'll block your number from your phone and ghost you completely, and that's not a great way to have a date. Okay, the next thing is Daddy by Korn, which is a 17-minute track, impassioned scream fit by Jonathan Davis of Korn about how he was raped by members of his family. And it feels authentic. It feels like he went through that shit. And if I was his band after he recorded that, I would have been like, hey, my dude, would you like a hug? I got a couple for you. I got a hug. I'll even kiss you if you need that. Because damn, dude, you've been through some shit. Worst song to turn on at a party. You know what I mean? It's like you're all hanging out with your friends and, and then you're like, yo, have you heard Daddy by Corn. Oh God, I'm gonna go outside and smoke another cigarette. I guess a lot of people also really wanted me to mention Mr. Crinkle by Primus, even though it's not a scary tune or a disturbing tune, it's just got a sick, sick bass line. See, I don't understand, like, like so much of my list is just cool music with groovy bass lines. <laughs> Turns out cool music with groovy bass lines, fucking horrifying. And with that, my friends, 
my enemies, my acquaintances, and also those that have not yet developed a firm opinion on me. I am now going to tell you the 10 most disturbing songs that I've ever heard, so if that's all time, that's all time, baby. We're gonna start off with Frankie Teardrop by Suicide. It's a meme that this song sucks to hear, but it does, in fact, suck to hear. Sometimes people are like, oh, does that live up to the, the hype of being absolutely terrifying? And it turns out, yes, this one lives up to the hype. I would highly, highly recommend that you never listen to Frankie Teardrop by Suicide because it's very literally just a, a almost rambling, almost incoherent nonsense tune about a guy who wants to kill his family. It's a hoot and a holler. Notably, one time I was sitting in the car with my mother and my mom wanted to know what I was listening to in my headphones. So I plugged in the auxiliary cable and I pressed play on Frankie Teardrop by Suicide. She asked me if I needed to go to church. This is a true story. So number two is Bella Lugosi's Dead by Bauhaus. Okay, I feel like everybody's got this on their list, but I cannot stress to you how like the complex noise at the time when this was made with its kind of ideas is really cool. But on top of that, if you have ever worked in a haunted house, which I have done many times, you know that blasting Bella Lugosi's Dead at four in the AM for the entirety of its like 50 15 minute runtime will creep you the shit out. Bella Lugosi's Dead has this weird, almost like alternating rhythm and bass line that's so like subtle to hear and it's weird usage of delay. But if you like isolate different sides of it, it's just very hypnotic. And so I feel like that's the word I would use to describe Bella Lugosi's Dead in specific. It's just like such a hypnotic song. And most of the time when people like play it and they're like, hey, you wanna hear a spooky track? It usually works. It always works and it's a sick track to dance to. Speaking of sick tracks to dance to, I am now going to bring up a song that I don't think many people know about, but maybe they should. It's called Warm Leatherette by The Normal. So I think this was made in the 90s, but I don't exactly know. I do know that there's a pretty sick cover by Trent Reznor lying around somewhere on the internet. My main point here is that this is a song about people dying in a car accident and having sex before they die in the car accident. The noise effects and the layering makes it sound like you're genuinely experiencing a car accident and also there's this weird alluring sexuality to the way that the the like vocals are done that it it almost feels like you're being seduced in the middle of your own death again it's one of those songs where you turn it on and people be like damn this is a fucking this this song goes hard and then about two three minutes in it everyone is hypnotized and everyone is saying wow this song's really fucked up dude Go check that one out and throw it on your Spotify playlist. Number four is Convulsion by Skinny Puppy. This is one of my favorite songs of all time. If if I was to name a song that was like one of the most influential tracks on my artistic endeavors, my musical endeavors, I, sorry, I, I make music. I, I'm, this is a terrible time. I love Skinny Puppy, an experimental electronic band that is also bordering occasionally on metal. Some of their music is not that great. Great. Some of their music is fucking awesome. Really hard to differentiate between when Skinny Puppy is killing it and when they aren't because most of the time it's harsh noise sometimes. <laughs> Convulsion is the first track on Too Dark Park, which is a horrifying record just in general, in and of itself. It's right on the face of it. Too Dark Park. I don't want to be in a Too Dark Park. The whole idea with Skinny Puppy is that they, they're, they're trying to capture what it must sound and be like to be a dog starving in this shitty industrial world. The way that you're hearing the music intentionally the most scary and abrasive possible. Semi non-rhythmic occasionally. It gets away from itself a lot. So it'll just be like grooving, grooving, grooving. And then all of a sudden you have no idea what the rhythm is anymore. So understand that Convulsion by Skinny Puppy, the craziest one they ever did. And if you were to listen to this on repeat, I genuinely think you probably would go insane. And I know this because I have listened to it on repeat. I like to pick things for these lists that are things that I genuinely like or would recommend to human people. You know, it's close to my heart, but also I'm pretty sure that if the majority of people on the internet listen to it, they would cry themselves to sleep. There's a lyrical bit in the song where Ogre is just like screaming
screaming downward. You feel like you're being pulled into hell and every imaginable hellish thing is screaming at you all at the same time. It's fucking awesome, y'all. Okay, next thing is Come to Daddy by Aphex Twin. I feel like a lot of the choices are gonna be these kind of like pseudo electronic, weird, almost esoteric, but really aggressive tracks. And Come to Daddy, one of the most aggressive electronic tracks I've ever heard. But I think also the song has a bit of a reputation primarily for its music video, which is directed by Chris Cunningham and really fucking horrifying. I love Chris Cunningham. I love Aphex Twin. So I do have a soft spot for this. It horrifying me in a specific way when I was younger had a huge impact on what I would end up doing for the remainder of my life. My whole life's roadmap was suddenly laid out before me when I finally watched Come to Daddy. Side thing, you should listen to Aphex Twin's Come to Daddy and, and be like, damn, this track goes hard and is a disturbing nightmare. But another disturbing nightmare is Dillinger Escape Plan's cover. Like it's in a weird phrasing and time signature, so it's even more aggressively angry. The shrieking and screaming is just overpowering at times, some of the vo vocal modulations. So I think genuinely, I almost want to say Dillinger Escape Plan did a more disturbing version of Come to Daddy than Avex Twin. But this is up for debate, and I would love to hear what anyone else has to say about that. Okay, the next song is Hamburger Lady by Throbbing Gristle. Again, I'm trying to pick things that I like, but also these are things that you're probably going to hear about a lot on lists like this, like Bella Lugosi's Dead, Frankie Teardrop, frequently on people's top 10 most disturbing lists. But my opinion on that is that they are genuinely that disturbing, and that's why they end up on these lists so much. Specifically, Hamburger Lady is revving almost like, it feels like the death grips sound, the death grips sound, the revving thing. First time I've ever heard it in a song, and it is so terrifying in this, the way that they do revving while Genesis Porridge is like uh, talking about someone who's gonna die and they're burned from their whole body and so you can't help but imagine adding this music together with genuinely looking at a burn victim thinking about the tragedy of that person's life those two things just make you really upset also it's just the most anxious track it's very nerve-wracking nothing about it is fun or happy and that's genuinely why I think it's kind of awesome also so I'm just a big Genesis P Orage fan. Like that's who can be surprised. I really like Psychic TV. I really like Throbbing Gristle just in general. I listen to a lot of that music because I have a broken mind. But also Genesis recently died. So big old rest in peace to Genesis who is the horrifying voice on Hamburger Lady. So go listen to Hamburger Lady and pour one out for my homie Genesis. Okay, this one is really hard to talk about because it's kind of weirdly relevant. The song, if you want to call it that is called Fuck Frankie and it is on Smells Like Children by Marilyn Manson. So Marilyn Manson in and of himself is kind of a charlatan. He's always been kind of representative of a charlatan. I'm not necessarily saying he doesn't believe the things that he says, but I think a lot of the times he says things that are easy to believe. What I'm saying is he's not doing anything that challenging. He's not out here saying that we need to be, you know, a bunch of communists or perhaps anarchy is a good idea. You know, he's not like quoting philosophers that we really desperately need to read, but he is reading like Nietzsche, I guess. His work has always been as disturbing as like Nietzsche, which is to say not disturbing whatsoever. However, in recent years, a lot of abuse allegations have come out against Marilyn Manson because he uh, notably abused a lot of women on tour and also bragged about it several thousands of times. <laughs> when I say he bragged about it several thousands of times, I mean he wrote this one book called The Long Hard Road Out of Hell and in it documents some pretty pretty scathing things that he was pretty excited to do to women. And those things sucked and were bad. So whenever anybody is like, ah, you know, I don't think he did anything wrong. I don't believe his victims. Might I recommend you take a listen to Fuck Frankie by Marilyn Manson, which is very literally just an audio recording of him like mistreating a woman and making a woman say some shit. And then he decided to put it on his album because he couldn't think of another track to put there. It is upsetting because it's like, oh wow, this person who I'm trying to like get on a level with ideologically is 100% uh, attacking and, and misusing women. That sucks. Number seven is literally just evidence. Okay, number eight is the five and a half minute hallway by 
Poe. I mentioned this in my last video, but a lot of people didn't think I was going to mention this in my House of Leaves video, so they assumed, like fools, that I didn't talk about it or didn't know about it. But I've been a Poe fan for decades, you piece of shit. Five and a half minute hallway, easily one of the scariest tracks I've ever heard, and it's mostly just because it's sound design. It's meant to be the soundtrack to a hypothetical House of Leaves mental experience. So Marksy Danielsi's sister, Annie, a soundtrack to House of Leaves in a weird way. The, uh, the album Haunted is very literally a soundtrack to House of Leaves. The Five and a Half Minute Hallway is, in my opinion, the scariest track on the whole record. It's one of the scariest tracks I've ever heard ever. Terrifying emotionality right at its very end because it sounds like, in the song, a woman is calling her dead relative. Her dead relative actually answers. And the idea is that she's been calling a lot and knows that this dead relative will never answer, but is still calling because she feels this like desperate desire for one day for the, for reality to not be real and for her to have actually not died. But then she does dead ass answer. So it's so scary. And the last line of it, it will, it will never leave my mind, but it's just a moment where she goes, mom. And it's just like, ah, album, but the whole album is so consistently terrifying that I felt like you needed to know about it, so I'm gonna talk about it. It's The Drift by Scott Walker. Any one of these songs in isolation could be considered the most horrifying thing I've ever fucking heard. Cossacks are marching in, terrifying. Please don't let the Cossacks march in. Clara, there's this moment where there's somebody punching a punching bag in almost like a polyrhythmic way. Someone is singing an operatic over top of the person punching the punching bag as if the, the punching bag itself is the rhythm for the song. It blew my mind. In my opinion, Scott Walker's The Drift is like a total masterpiece, but it also objectively sounds like you're being held down in a haunted house by a ghost who's shrieking their passions into you. And it's so terrifying because you just want to get up and run away. But every time you get a little break, you get tackled by another ghost who begins screaming that. And I know that you're thinking, I have no idea what that sounds like. But when you actually listen to the tunes, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. You will experience it yourself and it will truly bother you. <laughs> the Drift by Scott Walker is one of my favorite pieces of music I think I've ever heard heard generally like it, it changed my mind what music could be so I highly recommend you give that one a little listen huh and my last song is this is very much one of those personal preferences for me but it's a song that has so much deep-seated meaning toward my life that it feels like it needs to be included and that song is called one hit by the knife it is the brother sister duo fever ray has a tendency and reputation to be horrifying she modulates her voice in different directions and tells a lot of narrative stories with different characters, basically playing the character. She's singing as like several different men, a crowd of people. She's singing as young women. And a lot of it is talking about the story of sexuality and the story of like rape culture. So the song very much comes across like she's rallying up a crowd to go kill a rapist. Like how and who? Instead of asking like, oh, why did this person snap and do all these terrible things? We should instead ask, how did they they get away with doing it and who did it? And these are just very aggressive and angry questions that we don't get to ask as victims of like sexual assault or rape or rape culture. So the Knife's album, Silent Shout, beautiful art piece about being a woman in the world, experiencing sexual assault and not being able to say anything about it to anybody or make any changes whatsoever to the world. This manifests as a silent shout. So one hit is very literally the, in my mind, the silent shout. These are things we need to do and think about, but these are things that will never be heard because they came out of the lips of a woman. So there you go. That's my list of the top 10 disturbing songs that you can listen to on your iPod or your Zoom. 
Zune. If you get your Zune out and you download these tracks, make sure and tell Zune that I sent you because no one's downloaded anything off the Zune store in decades. Go over to, you know, your, your regular music streaming websites and check out these spooky tunes. I personally really, really recommend pretty much everything I mentioned just solely for the purpose of expanding one's mind, understanding what's out there and what you might or might not like. A lot of people don't actually know anything about noise music or black metal, industrial tunes. They don't know anything about that and because they don't know anything about it, they can't really develop ideas or taste. If you never listen to black metal, then how do you know that it's fucking trash? You have to listen to it to hear how trash it is. The best kind of criticism always comes from inside, my friends. You must understand it, then destroy it. And so with that, please go destroy my new album, Fish, which is uh, probably out everywhere now. It's some music. It's not quite as disturbing. I'd like to think there may be a couple tunes near the end that are a little bit bothersome in the old psyche, but probably nowhere near. I didn't really aim to make a disturbing album. I was making pop music. Also, look at this cover. What was I thinking? If you're a big fan of what I do and also disturbing media, maybe consider checking out my book Fluids, which is a gross, nasty book about lesbians who kill people. And don't you love to see it? Obviously, we stan. You know how sometimes on a shitty movie there will be unattributed quotes? I should just put quotes on the book that just say good, awesome. Just sit right here. It just says cool and just to, attributed to no one. Critics all over the world are saying that Fluids is cool. So check it out. It's $16 on my Bandcamp link in the diddly do. That's what the kids call it. I hope you enjoyed my video. Please consider giving my video a like and a subscribe. If you're new here, please definitely consider subscribing. I do this shit a lot. I have like, I have mental problems and I can't seem to stop. Also, if you're a big fan of enabling the mentally ill, might I recommend you head over to patreon.com slash nixfears and hand me a dollar. I'll take that dollar and I will buy floss with it so that I do not lose my teeth when I'm 50 or 60 years old. I would like to continue to have my teeth long into my grave, but we'll see. It might be a challenge. But either way, if you want to help me on my floss adventure so that I continue to keep these teeth, head over to patreon.com and throw me a dollar. And with that, thank you, friends. I hope that you have determined for yourself some terrifying thing to take and to listen to for yourself. I will see you soon with something equally stupid and bad. And never forget that no matter how bad the world is and no matter how like rough all of this shit can be, understand that love exists. And hey, if you were wondering if you deserve love, you should know that as a human being born on Earth, love being invented by humans, clearly you are entitled to that love as well. I love you, little bean. Be safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye!